Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Intel Extreme Masters World Championship for 2015. I, I like this a lot. The StarCraft fans are showing their hashtag passion. We like that a lot too. So game one is already done. I, I, Kolaris actually just joked with me, if it carries on like this, we might have to some, find something to do in about an hour from now. Uh, let's hope the next three games are a little bit longer and we can enjoy their full potential. First off, of course, let's just recap. We have had our first game of the day and a 3-0 victory for Fantasy. Uh, well done to all the Fantasy players in the Fantasy League for having Fantasy on their team. I don't know where I'm going with that one, but well done nevertheless. And if you haven't already played, well, it's a little bit too late now, but fantasy.eslgaming.com, uh, you can actually go over there and use it, but you won't get as many points, of course, because the first game is done. Time now to move on to our second match. And this one is also a very big game for both players. Our first player is one of those players who's been up and coming for a little while. In fact, for the last three years, he's been training and fighting hard to reach this very moment. In his first ever international tournament, please welcome Dark. Now, his opponent is a man who doesn't really need an introduction, but we always give them one anyway. He is the victor of more than any other player in the world, more tournaments in the Premier section of Team Liquid than any other player on the globe. The most successful player outside of Korea, and yet still a Korean. They are the winners after all. He is Team Liquid's Tasia. Plenty of support for Team Liquid's Tasia in the crowd here. Let's find out whether there's some Team Liquid bias on the desk. Thank you so much, Radai. What a wonderful introduction once again of our next two players. Dar from SK Telecom, Tasia from Team Liquid, and boy, do we have a great Zerg versus Terran coming up. I'm going to start off the discussion with Tasia's teammate, Snoot, who probably can answer so not nice. only about uh, the preview of this matchup, but even more about Tasia as an insight as a teammate. What are you expecting up in this upcoming series? I mean, I know who you're going to be predicting. <laughs> What's going to be uh, on the line here? Uh, no, I mean, this is going to be an amazing CVT. We have seen Dart bring out some really unorthodox styles, especially uh, he's become very famous for the Corruptor style, using Corruptors in a matchup where no one ever used Corruptors before. So uh, I'm just really excited to see what Dark has prepared for Teja here. Teja, I feel like he's more of a uh, standard, uh, very defensive player, I feel, in TVC. Sure. Uh, especially against early aggression, he does very well. I remember the dream hacks where life just kept on attacking and attacking into Teja. Hmm. And uh, Teja was eventually able to defend. Mm -hmm. well, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that since we're already on the topic of Dark here. Um, now, what, what do you guys think about it? Do you agree with more how Apollo is saying like Dark is one of the, the people that can actually go really far in this tournament? People are underestimating him. Jeff, you're nodding a lot. I mean, are you identifying? <laughs> <laughs> He's just nodding <laughs> through everything right now. <laughs> I'm taking a lot of affirmation in your smart. encouragement. Can't help it. Mm. Uh, Dark, I actually got a chance to cast him way back in the days when EG hosted a online uh, competition years ago, and he was really good back then, but even since then, he's kind of fallen back into the darkness. He hasn't really won any big big tournaments, which is our metric for you know who's actually good at this game. It's like, sure. have you even won a GSL, you <laughs> idiot? Um, but here he is. Does he stand a chance against Tasia? Absolutely. I think all these guys do, but I still think Tasia's got to be the well-deserved not just fan favorite, but probably the predictable favorite. Right. And once we all vote for Tasia to win, we can all be swept under the rug again as we're wrong, because Dark will just smash the crap out of him. Um, but I did see Tasia practicing StarCraft 2 in the back, which is an oddity. In the past, I've seen him, before a term, he's playing FIFA, he's playing nothing, he's playing Twitter. Uh, and then he goes on to not lose a single game the entire time. <laughs> And his, you know, Victor Cousins is like, what are you doing? He's like, he's like <laughs> not worried about it. Yeah. He's like, I'm thinking about retiring this year too. Yeah. Unless yeah. I make a quarter of a million dollars, I've told my mom. <laughs> College is where I got to go. Well, there's uh, $68,000 on the line here. Well, uh, Dark, yeah, he's the player that we'll be looking for. In the meanwhile, Tasia is the player that comes in as a favorite. I mean, pretty much 
a lot of things are going to be coming yeah. up here. We haven't seen them play for a couple of years, but we've seen Tasia and Dark even face off back in GSL, like IPTL. What are your reading on the matchup here, Kev, head to head? I think it's very hard to predict because uh, Dark is definitely coming in as a more relevant play over the last two, three months, I'd say, because Tasia's kind of been like a small AFK. You know, he's not really, he didn't make it very far in the GSL. Like, Tasia losing in the round of 32 is always surprising, and he didn't actually win a tournament for once, like for the last three months. So I feel if you're like a uh, pro league elitist, <laughs> Right now. Dry spell. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> no, but like if you're like a diehard, you know, Korean starker of watching, you probably say like, how can they even say Teja is the favorite? Dark is the overwhelming yeah. favorite going into this. I'd be surprised if Teja takes a map. I think we're going to see old school Teja over here. I think we're going to see a really solid performance from him. But he's definitely going to have to work very hard for it. Like Dark is pretty yeah. damn scary, but... I just I'd, don't want to. I don't know. I yeah. don't, don't want to go against Asia. I like these crossover matches a little bit too. Dark does not intermingle too much with the foreigner scene, if you will. We sure. don't see him at Dream Hacks or IM events uh, as much. Tasia, of course, literally travels the world collecting checks um, from everyone, but mostly kind of the foreigners. And this is an opportunity where, again, a lot of those people that have uh, those fantasies, if you will. <laughs> Just, I'm going to be here all day. Yeah. Um, about, you know, Tasia playing in the GSLs, again, like he used to, playing against those top tier Koreans. Right. I think Dark has earned the title as one of the top Zergs right now. Nobody's putting him above life or anywhere near that, I would say. But he's still, as, as Rotterdam said, the last couple months, we've been seeing a little bit more of the Dark. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, think, I think the thing that stands out for Dark is that he has truly impeccable macro. He's so good at cool. injects, uh, spending money, and droning really hard. His macro is just completely it's it's insane and yeah. uh, the second the second most needed thing that you absolutely need to know for CVT I feel is engagements and Dark's engagements are really really good as well so he has a very good skill set for playing CVT cool and I'm really excited to see uh, how he's I going mean, to play this no, out I'm still you've spoken a little bit with your teammate with Tasia like uh, off the record how how good is he feeling about this off the record between you two like now you can talk about you it you can yeah. tell Actually, Kevin anything There's, it's just him yeah. it's just I didn't private. really get any useful info but he seemed to be in a very good mood and okay. I, I think he is in shape you know Tasia mm -hmm. always brings this very special magic to mm -hmm. IEMs so you know every time you want to say something like yeah Tasia hasn't really been performing that well lately we're not sure exactly how well he's going to play right that's now that's when he pounds that's when he goes to an IM and wins it, right? You know how confident he is? He actually tweeted to our dear friend. <laughs> he actually tweeted at Artosis and said, you know, how am I going to do today? He's literally, he's, he's asking for the curse. He's mm. asking for it. And Fortunately for us, Artosis was playing heroes. <laughs> yeah. He has nothing Thank to worry God. about. Thank God. Oh, man. Well, Artosis might have to stay out of this one, but that's not going to stop us from getting some predictions from our panelists. Rotterdam, who's so, going to take it? So far, I'm on fire, so I'm just going to say Tasia 3-1. All right, Tasia 3-1 for Kev. I'm going to do, well, okay, since Kevin was so long the first time we <laughs> predicted, <laughs> I'm going to say Dark 3-2. All right, Dark 3-2. Yeah, I'm cheering for Tasia, obviously, but I, I have to go with what, uh, what uh, Jeff said. Oh, yeah. wow. So Snoot's actually going to pick Dark for this, so we're leaning a little bit towards the Zerg here it from SK Zerg, Telecom. It goes Zerg, then Team Liquid mm. for Snoot. <laughs> Then, so that's uh, the bias order. Then uh, Vikings. I think that's actually <laughs> the third one down there. Well, uh, I got to know Snow a little bit better, and we got to know Dark and Tasia a little bit better, and you'll be doing that soon with Apollo and Maynard, who have the next cast. That's right. Game number two about to begin. Apollo cannot wait for this one. We got the, the established Liquid Tasia, the winner of 11 premier events. He's been on stage... I, I don't Countless know, times. I, I, thousands of times. At least hundreds. And he's up against Dark, who really doesn't have a whole lot of stage experience outside of Pro League. This is Dark's debut tournament. He's been a Kesper-trained robot over the last three years, practicing every day, 12-plus hours every single day. And now he finally travels to his first international tournament through qualifying through the Korean qualifier, the hardest qualifier to get into the Intel Stream Masters in the most important tournament. But as you said, he goes up against Tasia, who excels in these type of tournaments. 11 StarCraft championships to his name. I'm so excited to see how these two will match up. Absolutely. It's really, um, I mean, we'll have to introduce this guy before we talk about him. In the bottom right, no, in the bottom south spawn here of Vani, we have got Liquid's Tasia. A lot of fans here in Poland. He's just stripping off, getting free. And in an off here from SKT1, got to make some noise for this guy on his stage for the first time. This is Dark.
So regular watchers of Pro League know the power that Dark can bring to the table when he's when he's playing at his best. But the problem is he does have consistency issues. Yes. He gets nervous here and there and he makes mistakes and loses games that sometimes you think he wouldn't ever lose. What player, for me at least, when I'm looking at today and looking at Dark, which player's turned up today? Is it the player that we all go ahead and say, okay, this guy's actually gonna be the, the next best Zerg player in the world, or is it just gonna be another washout performance? And, and really, in a game like StarCraft 2, you've got to put a big question mark above Tasia's head as well. Where has he been for the last month? He's, he's been in a few online tournaments at the beginning of March. Correct. But he hasn't been on stage, uh, well, he hasn't been in a big international tournament pretty much since he, he qualified for this tournament by, um, by winning Shenzhen. Yeah, he qualified to get into Star League, but lost in Challenger, which is the round of 32. He also lost in the GSL round of 32, and he doesn't play in Pro League and there hasn't been any international tournaments, so we don't really know what to expect from Tasia today. But as Snoot has said, and the way that Tasia's tweeted on the internet, he's he's feeling happy to be yeah. here. And I I just have Tasia has this kind of magic about him when he enters these type of tournaments, which I never think we can doubt. No, absolutely. And um, uh, hopefully it's not shaking Dark too much in his shoes, his shoes here, because he, you know he needs to be focused. He needs to be on his game to even do damage to Tasia. But uh, we have. Of course, the panel favoring Dark here. I personally am favoring Tasia in this matchup. I've got faith in him, even though he hasn't been on stage. I'm sure yep. he's been practicing, in, and yep. uh, I'm sure that he's taken this tournament very seriously. There's a lot of money on the line. There is a lot of money on the line. $117,000 and the chance to be the Inter Street Masters world champion. There's a lot. But the two builds have started to take shape now. Tasia opened up with Command Center first, really macro focused, not looking to do any early pressure with Reapers, which is common, uh, not looking for any other type of proxy buildings that could instantly win him the game. Whereas Dark has played in a very similar pattern as well. He's gone for the hatchery first and then went for the spawn and pull and then the gas just a little bit later on. And he, for the first couple of seconds, is going to try to find out what Tasia's been up to with his first Overlord. Yeah, exactly. So the, the Overlord is going to confirm that CC there. Very, very standard, as you mentioned, to do this now. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see if this if it pans out this way, but uh, Mech has kind of been, uh, you know, pretty much the go-to for a lot of Terrans on Vani. It's been happening a lot on the ladder. You're Terrans correct. going to going for Mech and forcing the Swarm Host to re uh, reaction out of Zerg. So Vani, this could be a longer game if Tasia wants to do that. But that said, though, this guy does generally want to favor a bio transition. He's not always going to Mech here. Absolutely. Um, I am actually, you know, a lot of people say that he's a macro Terran, but I kind of feel like he might cheese a couple times in this series as well. I've seen him do it and he does it very well. I think he may do uh, during this series. Dark now needs to somehow, if I, I, he needs to, but I don't think he will, figure out what Tage is doing behind the command center first because there are aggressive options after the command center's come down. For example, we already see the second gas being planted down here for Tasia, which is going to allow him access towards Banshees or possibly even Hellbats, depending on which way he wants to go through. But Dark has no Overlords anywhere close. He has no way to get in to find out what is happening. So his overall build must be defensive. He needs either a Bailey Nest down, a Roach Warren down, something or additional Queens that can help out against this type of play. And if he doesn't do that, and if Tasia does go aggressive as he seems to be aiming towards, Dark could take damage early. Yeah, you're absolutely right. We haven't seen any tech drop here. I mean, he is just getting speed for the Zerglings, but so far, just drones coming out of Dark. And Tasia looking like he's switching over to those Banshees, as you mentioned. This is quite standard in the beginning of TVZ to put yeah. on the Banshee pressure with the Hellions. And uh, we see the man pump being pumped out right now. And Dark's going for a third with still no Baneling there, still no Roach Warren. Yeah, nothing he's as a keen yet. bean. And we know that with good Hellion and Banshee control, especially on this map that doesn't have creep spread around that third base yet, it's very difficult to be able to control against the Hellions and Banshees when they're working together, which we should be seeing out from Tejra as the star point has switched over. Double Queens have been added on. There's currently two out. There's going to be four. Will there be Spore Crawlers? Will there start a lair? Because remember, Dark still doesn't know what's going on. Not just yet. And Tasia does have a bit of an idea. He had a bit of a look here. The Hellion's getting into the base. This Overlord just now looking into the main to see what's happening in Tasia Town. Ah, uh, Dark finally gets that scout. He's, he gets the starport. He knows it's going to be Banshee. So yep. now the preparation should be incoming. Yeah, we'll be seeing draw spores dropped very, very soon if he's not a silly bun Zerg here, and I'm pretty sure that he's good, he's better than that. Hellions coming in, the middle of the map, taking away a bit of map vision from Dark, as Hellions like to do, getting that map control for the Terran. Double Evo Chambers going down for Dark as the Hellions head towards a third. Three Queens already in position. There's a lot of Queens here. He's just sent the drones down. The Hellions want that juicy cluster of drones. Yep. Notice how Dark is saving energy on the Queens to help with the defense by using Transfuse when necessary. Yeah. Two Queens here with Transfusers, but it looks like they might not even need them. And Spore's Spore going down now, just Perfectly in time. timed. Perfectly yep. timed. He didn't rush them down as soon as he saw the Starport. He waited. And as you can see, the Banshee now on his side of the map. The Spore Crawl is finishing up. Very nice play from Dark. 
Yeah, indeed. So these Hellions really not finding an opening at all, and, and Dark is defending, but also defending efficiently. He's he's not over committing to any kind of defense at the moment. He's, he's made exactly what he needs to make to hold it if he has the you know correct control and doesn't make too many mistakes. This Banshee finding a really sweet spot here with no creep connecting the main and the natural. It's getting a bit of damage done on the spores. Just gonna stay out of that detection range. The Queens will put a bit of hurt on that Banshee, but she can just mark her around for days. The more damage Tasia does, the easier the game becomes come the next few minutes here because he's basically just slowing Dark down. Yeah, indeed. He sees the double Evo chamber as well, knows that the melee ups are on the way. There's no Roach Warren to see. He's had a good look at the third. The Hellions coming in for, <laughs> speaking of the third, are going to be looking for a bit of drone barbecue here. But, da but Dark's map vision, he's got the Overlord spread very, very nicely, knows the common paths of attack. And uh, Tasia once again being battered away by just a couple queens. So far, pretty solid defense there from Dark. He didn't yeah. really take too much damage. Four drones overall have gone down. The aggression isn't over yet, but so far that's pretty good from Dark. I'm pretty impressed. Yeah, and Tasia's, uh, sorry, Dark here is just holding a few lings at the back. They have speed, obviously. Uh, Bailing Nest on the way now mm. with the lair just about to finish. So Dark heading into tier two. Probably going to be going for Mutalist Switch as we see with the melee upgrades. You can't really just stay on lings for, for that long. And um, yeah, so the extra gases are going down. We'll be seeing that spire shortly. All right, so we're going to enter the next stage here. Tasia tried to do some damage, didn't get too much done. Uh, and now it's completely over because the lair is done. Overseers are out. Queens are now going to be able to take the Banshee down very easily. Um, he's got a lot of lings out, so the Hellions are going to be useless. Yeah. He would love to slow down creep spread, which is why he's hovering around this area. But there's a lot of Queens, and that's been pushed back. Tasia's build's been pretty solid. Three command centers, double engineering down was very early before additional barracks was added on. And now he's really ramped himself up to the five barracks production. Some medivacs are on the way. He's got a reactor on the factory to start getting some Widow Mines. And in a moment, when Combat Shields is close to finishing, that's when Tasia's next attack will be, and Dark is already setting up some type of play potentially here with Lings being built heavily, yeah. counter-attacks, run-bys. Could be going for an attack on the third while trying to run into the natural and do some uh, do some damage there, but he's got to be careful. It's a lot of bio here, plenty of Marines. Yeah. I think Dark is waiting for Tasia to move out to then for him to move in himself. That's what it looks like on this right side. Yeah, Viking here finding that sweet spot for the Overlord's gonna find his hidey hole and down goes that Viking. No more Overlords for him. And the Lings are coming in towards the, th the third. There's a, quite a few Marines here, so Dark definitely yeah. can't win this engagement. That, that was not a good fight there for Dark. I definitely feel that maybe trying to run around while building a lot of units at home could have been the better yeah. choice. But he lost a lot of Zerglings for really not killing off that much. Oh, he's, yeah, prob probably reacted a little bit late there. They didn't expect the Marines to be as far out as they were as they are on the attack. Heading across with some Hellions. Armoury finished as well, so they will probably be turning to Hellbats shortly to be healed up by those medevacs. And the next part of the game is all about the contention for this fourth base. Tasia wants to be able to defeat it. He wants to be able to bring down this fourth hatchery because if he does, Dark is going to be limited on production and also units. Oh, Hellbats morphing a little bit late there, not really adding too much to the fight. They did soak up a few Bailing hits, and the Bailing's target fired from Tasia, and he lifts up without taking too many Marine losses at all. Very nice play there by Tasia, and the assault will continue on. If he gets his scan, there's four creature tumors there. They're going to be, be able to taken out. There's a scan. The Ling's already in position. The Ling's a little bit... The, uh, the Marines are a little bit hurt. The Mines are doing some damage, but not the greatest hits in the world. And Tasia being deflected for now. Quite a lot of creep that he has to contend with here. Didn't get the tumors. 2-2 two, two on the way. They're not too far behind the Zerg as well, so he's on point. His macro has been flawless so there's, far. There's been no breathing room to use medivacs because of how much gas he's been oh, having to this spend on the fire. That micro control from Tasia taking out the Banelings without getting any big hits there. Yeah, I really think he needs to start uh, using the medivacs and dropping around because there's no mutualist in this game and he could be doing a lot of damage, though I think they're going to be constructed very shortly. He's got a lot of money in the bank. Probably his next choice. No, it's going to be Corruptors. Wow, okay. So this is a style that we've seen out from Dark in the past where he uses Corruptors over Mutalus and will use the Corruptors primarily to just destroy the Medivacs over and over and over and not really caring about the yeah. attack ability that the Mutalus can give. It takes a long time for Marines to deal with that. Nice split stream from Tasia is getting a bit of damage there on the bar at the front. Dark really not getting any juicy connections, but deflecting Ta Tasia is his name of the game right here. Right. And keeping, giving himself some breathing space to continue to make the units and not take too many drone losses or lose a hatch would be devastating. Tasia's not really making too much ground. I mean, the creep spread is so deep already here, and he wants to eliminate all of this. He really needs to start pushing this back. It's going to be yeah, so much scans. better for his engagements. Needs more scans, needs to get tumors, really needs to push it back. Dark is creeping towards the watchtower here. Uh, the, big re the big rally train, the parade has begun here, but Tasia is. He's just sending everything, rallying it all to the third. And this Bailings actually didn't quite finish off the fire. Those ones did, though. Oh, Tasia, the reaction a little bit late there. And this is, this is excellent for Dark. Yeah. He's pushed uh, Tasia all the way back now. He's going to clear up a lot of these medivacs. And notice how the Marines just don't really bring the Corruptors down fast enough. 
He's losing everything here. Yeah, the, the heavily armored corruptors are just taking all those those marine hits. Actually, now they're in. The, I don't know what those corruptors were looking for there. Maybe an extra couple of medevacs, but uh, none to be seen. As Tasia's actually lost all of them. And a big round of units being morphed in again here for Tasia. And likewise, the dark. Switching to tanks. Interesting. So we're going to try and uh, get a bit more splash damage on the ground there. Getting the melee ups. Oh, sorry, the uh, armory ups there for the for the mech units. Corruptor still looking for medevacs. Nothing to see here. Tasia's only making a couple at a time back home. Feels like uh, Tasia's uh, hitting this brick wall and he's changed his to tanks. I guess to maybe try to have tanks on the yeah. high ground. He's cut out Marauder. Base. He's cut out Marauder production. Only making tanks now. So going to rely on tank target fire to deal with the banelings and everything on the ground. Yeah, uh, Tasia's the... looking at a different plan. He's got a drop. Or he's, yeah. he's not doing any damage to Dark's economy at and all. That, that's actually a big hole in the map vision of Dark as well. Uncharacteristically for, for to have a Zerg that doesn't have an Overlord sort of towards that gold base there. So yeah. he, he's actually got a, a good opportunity to surprise Dark with a drop, but Dark did see with the Watchtower that there is uh, you know, potential drop play from Tasia, and he's reacted already, sending some links back to a much better spot. Very high level game by both players, uh, but as you said, that is a mistake, and overall speed is probably the reason why this wasn't spread. Yeah, actually, very, very true. So this drop is going to come into the main. Dark now just sees it, pulling links back. I mean, that's a lot of links, so I can't see this drop doing a whole lot. No, it's just, this should be cleared up fine. Now, he's dropping, but he's not doing things on the other side of the map at the same time. And I feel like when a Zerg has this yeah. much creep, when they have this much map control, you really need to start, um, you know, splitting him up a little bit when it's primarily Lings. I think Tej is almost uh, just not wanting to take a fight because he's lost this war to the left-hand side of the yeah. creep and the Marines. And hopefully, if he can get towards 3-3 with a good army size, that would be yeah. the ideal chance to take this good fight. So for now, it's about clearing Ooh. creep, maybe still dropping around. Nice position with these tanks, actually. The Banelings not really getting too much done there. Yeah, a that big sim on the bio. Gonna get some of the Corruptors down as they come through, and he's going deep on the creep. Oh, Tasia has to pull back again. The Lings looking for the wraparound for the Banelings. Oh my god, the Banelings have died to such incredible Wintermine hits here. And that was brilliant for Tasia. That was excellent for Tasia, and he still has got to be very patient. He doesn't have 3 3, and he doesn't want to rush this. His army, he did take a lot of losses to his army. Rebuild what he's got, harass, slow down Dark a little bit more, pull his army out of position. 3-3 three, is not far away. If he can just rebuild, wait till 3-3, three, three, then take this fight on the high ground where creep is starting to be spread, then he's going to be looking at the best possible fight with these tanks in a very clumped up area. These Corruptors looking to shut down a drop here. They're just a little bit too slow though. That's the kind of the weakness here of the Corruptor is they are a lot slower than the Mulus, so they can't chase those medevacs. Lings and Banelings looking for another juicy connection. These tanks have actually been very great, right. very great for Tasia so far. It's time for Tasia's next big fight in this game. Three, three upgrades are about to complete. He has an upgrade advantage over his opponent in the next 10 seconds. Dark needs the best possible fight to be able to hold off yeah. against this very Absolutely. difficult attack. Big Banding Plus is coming in. Tasia now reacting with a bio. I feel like this might be a little too late. The Banelings are actually connecting with a lot of the bio here. Was there enough for Dark to finish it up? No! Tasia's bio too powerful, and he's pushing forward on the creep here very comfortably, as there's not too many Banelings left to Dark. Yeah, there's only a couple left. Let's get a hell of a wrap around. Big wrap, and they, they cut out the micro there. The Banelings do connect. Three, three Marines with those armors. Still go down. And it looks like he's being stymied for now. There's not a huge rally from Tasia towards this attack. And Dark realizes this. He's going to push forward with the Lings and the Banelings and keep Tasia back and push him back towards his fort. Tasia has to run back to the planetary. He got pushed back from that attack. And as Luke oh, already mentioned, is that his lava injects have been pretty fantastic so far. He's been able to re rebuild a lot of that army very fast. He's got a great economy. His drone count's perfect. Drone count is perfect. His production is perfect. He gets back up to where he wants to be, respreading creep, getting that bailing cap back up, and now he has his own 3-3 on the way with the uh, uh, another infestation pit, not sure. I think he meant to build the Ultralisk Cavern there, a bit of a mistake, but Dark keeps pushing Tasia back at every different type of attack Tasia tries. Yeah, and he always looks so strong in these attacks. He has everything going for them into the attack, but Dark's engagements, Snoot already brought this up in the analysis desk. Dark will always pick these engagements and make them look incredibly simple when they really aren't at all. Yeah, he's on five bases. He's in a wonderful position here. He hasn't got the gases at that goal just, just yet. Just think, because he's not building Mutalist over and he's been able to retain the Corruptors quite a lot, he doesn't need huge amounts of gas. I mean, he's already working and has been working off six gas in this game, which is yeah. incredibly low considering. But all the gas that he uses is only on Bailings because he's not building mass Corruptors, mass Mutalisks. And it's been very efficient for him. Looks like Tejo thought about a drop there, but decided to bring units back as he sees lots of links and bailings here actually going pretty far off creep to try and connect with these these uh, these Marines with lots of reinforcements here from Tejo. I mean, 
Uh, there's no opportunity but where Teja can be like, okay, I'll take this fight with this advantage yeah. anymore. That's gone pretty much. Sure, he has 3 3, but very shortly, Dark will have the same upgrades. Teja needs to make something happen before that. 3-3 three, three upgrades complete for Dark. And then don't forget, we have the Ultra's Cavern on the way. Absolutely. Does he have a higher amount of Marauders? I'm not sure. I don't think he does. I feel like drop play might be a good decision for Tasia if he wants to try and split Dark up a little bit. But as it goes, Tasia's kind of got tunnel vision here. He wants to go for this, this for the hatchery kills, getting some corrupted kills on the far right here, which is very nice, as that will uh, open up the skies for him a little bit here. Yeah, I think it might be wise for Dark to, stay to, to start to take extra gases, because imagine if he takes extra gases, he could maybe try to build in Festers too. Combining yeah. Infestors with Ultralis could be deadly for Tasia if he makes any type of mistakes. It's very hard for the Terran to get away with anything once they're locked down with the, the Fungals and the Ultralis coming in for those big scary hugs. Tanks being sieged just on the outside of the creep here, and Tasia once again. Dark is waiting for his 3 3. He, he's waiting for his 3 2 three, three, to complete. This is a perfect time for Tasia, but yeah. patience from Dark. Yeah, and he wants Tasia to push as far deep into the creep as he can before that engagement so that he can get a nice big surround. The Ultralis have hatched, and here they come. The Siege Tanks, there's not that many Siege Tanks just at the back here, and not a whole lot of Marauders for Tasia. All but, right, uh, Dark is going to be ready for his fight. I, I guess he can wait for the plating upgrade for his Ultralis, which is another 30 seconds or so. There's no need to rush this. It's all about being calm and not making mistakes while under oh, pressure. Dark. Somehow, Tasia got through the sensor net here and he's going to get himself a hatchery on the right, so that's nice picking up that hatchery, but it's not really being mined from just yet. Yeah. So, uh, not a critical hatchery kill, but a hatchery kill nonetheless. Always nice for Tasia. All right. Dropping some more production here, needs to spend that money. His bank is quite high, and he knows he's going to be losing a cluster of units pretty soon as he has to go engagement after engagement and keep the non stuck pressure, keep the Zerg making oh. things. Failings, uh, yeah. More than blown up there from these tanks. Always a nice pick off here. The tanks at the front, the bio at the back. Plenty of the ultras coming down, and the queen's coming down. The transducers as well. The ultras are so powerful. They have the three five, and they're pushing towards the bio. The transducers from Dark are good so far. He's getting a little bit far off the creep though. Needs to heal and pull back. Yeah, that was a very good fight from Dark, and again pushes Tasia back. And look at the supply difference with the remax of 94 zerglings. That's oh going to be a lot of bailings very shortly because he's got 1,200 gas in the bank. An excellent fight from Dark, and the key point there he didn't overextend he didn't go off creep because we were bound to see the ultras being kited by the marauders and he would have lost a lot there yeah. and more importantly would have had to transfuse more which would have made the next fight from dark a lot less powerful he's got a lot of energy left and he's gonna do the same again before tasia can rebuild Tasia setting up for an expansion here, dropping the sensor tower, which is a nice idea. It eliminates the possibility of run buys. You know, it's going for a drop towards look at, the main look as Look at well. Tasia's building placements. He knows an attack is about to happen. Absolutely. He's got to filter these units as much as possible. All oh, the ultralists are actually evaporating here because now the Marauders are out in force. And there are so many villains coming through here. This planetary can be right clicked on, and it does. It looks like the planetary is going to go down, and a whole bunch of SCVs could as well. The ultralist is just getting the job done. As Tasia's being pushed all the way back here, Apollo. He's in big trouble. He's in big trouble. Even even though he's going to pick off this gold base, maybe that drop can do some more damage. It doesn't matter. But Dark just hit right through the middle and he got exactly what he wanted. I think he's throwing some bailings too as a trap for Marines that come up north. Excellent play from Dark, just holding Tasia on the line through all of this game and then finally taking his fight to yeah. Tasia and he won that convincingly. Beautiful game one from Dark so far as Tasia's not backed on the ropes. He's down 70 supply and he's trying to make what he can, but he only has that much production. There's only so much he can do as a Terran. He doesn't exactly have a bank of things to be able to make things. He has, he's making a one at a time back home. And Dark and is just... He's all over the place. He's, he's incredible. And this is the performance that all of his fans that are watching, all the SK yeah. Telecom fans, want to see him bring to the Intel Extreme Masters World Championship at his debut. Would he crumble? Would he play to what we all oh, expect him to do? Oh, the failing mines to go up for all these breaches here. Oh, Dark, you tease. He had a look afterwards and realized he missed that <laughs> moment, but he's going to take another fight very shortly. It's 200 supply to 130. Tasia's down, Tasia's hurting, and Dark oh, is going to surround. take map number one. This engagement for Dark looks amazing. The bandings are coming through. The Marines have nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. They find the Burrow Banes, but it's a little bit too late. So much from Dark GG. Game number one going to Dark, and with a game like that, you really realize why this guy had so much hype when he was playing his Pro League games. Anytime Dark came out, you would see Twitch chat explode with Dark hype, and so much love for this kid. And uh, it's no surprises when you see him play ZBT like that. Absolutely incredible performance there. Defensive, macro-oriented held everything that Tasia did and all the different stages of Terran versus Zerg that we saw Tasia do, which usually beats Zerg players. He couldn't break through, Doc held on, and then when Doc was finally ready, when he got 3-3, when he got the Ultralis, and he survived that difficult part 
of Zerg versus Terran. He just let loose and absolutely destroyed that later part. And he played excellent there. Tej looking a little bit relaxed for a guy that's just uh, been manhandled a little bit and getting to one. Now, I think the, the, the game was very close till a point. At the, there was a, that, that mid to late game transition when Dark just, you know, if, you, if a Zerg doesn't take damage back at home, if he's not losing drones and he's not losing hatcheries, yep. they're going to take the map away from you and there's not much you can do as that creep spreads out. And Tasia let it get to that point. And when you're as good you as Dark... You can't let that happen. It, exactly, you can't let it happen. When a player is as good as Dark, he's not going to loot. He's not going to make silly mistakes like that. He's not going to let Tasia get away with that, Polo. Yeah, he won't. And he must not let that happen coming into map number two, which we'll be jumping into after a quick 60 seconds. Can Tasia come back against Dark? We'll find out. Guys, welcome back. Game number two between Dark and Tasia about to begin. I can't. I just. I hate that we have to wait, Apollo. I just want Starcraft after Starcraft. But yeah, I mean, these players are just incredible. This this bracket is incredible. This match is incredible, and we got nothing but non-stop greatness. This and it's whole phase. it's the World Championship. It's meant to be full of great games and awesome players, and that's what we have here at the World Championship here in Katowice, in Poland. And I'm very excited to see this next map. Can Tasia knock it up a couple of levels? Because throughout the years of Stark, we've seen that he absolutely can. When he loses a game, he sometimes smiles as we saw in the booth there and says, okay, no, you're actually playing rather well. But I'm Tasia. I've won 11 of these types of tournaments. Yeah. I can easily knock it up a level and continue to fight with him. So was that smile like, that was a fun game, or is it like, Dark, your time is done now. You've had your game. Now the old Tasia is going to come back. We'll have to wait and see as we get into game number two on Deadwing. The bottom left here from Team Liquid. Everyone loves him. I love him too. This is Tasia. <laughs> and in the top right with a brilliant game one, the SKT1 Zerg. This is Dark. <laughs> Fair bit of love for Dark of the crowd. They get a little bit yep. louder every time you introduce him. And that's how you know when you're starting to get a few more fans here at Katowice, Poland. Well, Dark definitely deserves a lot of fans. He's played in four consecutive GSLs now, which is very impressive in itself. He's made the round of 16 a couple of times, but in his career has never managed to get a top eight performance or at least a minimum yeah. result level. It's frustrating. Um, it, as a fan, and as I'm sure just doubly much for him. But, but you this know. year, he I can guarantee you that he'll get at least the top eight somewhere through 2015. If he didn't get that, yeah. He's going to get it, there's no doubt. And if he winning here, of course, he would get that. Exactly. If he keeps playing like he did in game number one, then all of a sudden he will be in that round of eight. But we want to see him get yeah. to a round of four, Apollo. Tasia, we've seen we him do. win tournaments before. That's nothing new here. 11-time Premier Champion. Incredible statistics for Tasia. He knows how to play best of fives, best of sevens, better than yep. the majority of StarCraft II professionals. He's been around the block. He's seen some things. He has seen a lot of things. One thing that he needs to adjust coming into this next map now, and... You kind of have two options. After the way that game one played, and you're looking from Tasia's perspective now, you look at it and say, okay, we can play a similar game. If this is the way that you're going to play against me, very defensive, very macro-oriented, and just sit back and just deflect everything I do. You look at that and say, okay, well, I either do the same again, and I let you do that, and I play better myself and find those opportunities and find those holes, or you completely change your game and try to be super, super aggressive by different types of timings, Blue Flame Hellions, Hellbats, Banshee Hellbats, and all the different types of attacks that Terrans can do. Tasia so far has opened up exactly the same, and I'm really wondering which way he'll like to approach 
Dark on this map, which in these positions, Maynard, are excellent for Dark. They are actually. I mean, if they were if they were close air, that's obviously better for Tasia. But um, you know, Dark has as much room as he possibly could have asked for on Deadwing to exactly. breathe here, and that's exactly what a Zerg needs: more distance, more space. Right, and a massive open air in the middle that he can creep spread like he did in the previous game to have the perfect engagements coming from multiple different angles, and ideally a proper 360 angle where he even comes from behind Tasia yeah. would be perfect. And he's got his four bases took to the top right, nice and easy to defend as well. So it's an ideal situation here for Dark. How is Tasia going to look to exploit? Because right in this position where the SAV is, maybe he can elevate up and down from the third base, maybe yeah. have some Marines on the top, some Marines on the low ground, and look for some good fights. Yeah, there's an abusable cliff here, and I mean, you, you, can, you do kind of have a decision as a third, but it's not really a decision. You're always going to take it and expand towards the Terran because you don't have to worry about rocks when right. up against someone like Tasia, who's just going to attack on two fronts at once and really stretchy thin, especially in the early game. Mm. Switching over, uh, well, I mean, it's a very, very standard TBZ so far. He went to CC first, gonna have Hellions coming out shortly, and Dark, yeah. once again, looking exactly like Game 1, just like Tasia, getting that link speed and just drones for now. But Dark is in a position, even though he's in good spawning positions for the mid to late game, there's one weakness of being in this position, is he cannot really scout what his opponent's up to, as Overlords are only just arriving, and Zerglings are not going to get past that bunker with Marines in. Yeah. So in Dark's mind, he's got no idea what's going on. And Tasia is exploiting that to the best possible way by throwing down a very greedy third command center. And if you think back to the previous game again, where Dark destroyed Tasia, you'd be maybe sometimes expecting Tasia to try something like Cloak Banshee, Blue Flood Hines, those Hellbat plays, but he's doing the opposite and it's looking rather well for him. It is. I mean, we could be seeing Banshees here as well, but you can still go Hellion Banshee with that third. It's just, um, you know, not as many units, yeah. obviously. And the positioning of this third that he's taking is great as well. It's best pos possible po best possible place to put that third CC because the Overlord generally comes from the very, very far north and uh, right. heads, heads through the middle there. So, good positioning. He'll be taking that towards the... that we'll have to deal with the rocks shortly, but... Uh, He's going to be sending those Hellions across the map. Going to take away those towers from Dark if he did have the towers, and he's going to be trying to get drone kills or any scouting whatsoever. All right, Dark's poking in with an Overlord to the south, and he's going to have a quick look. And he sees the factory, and he sees the starport switching over, and just by the timing of the starport being lifted now and placed down again, he knows that a third command center has already been built because naturally this would have been faster because the 400 minerals that were thrown in the command center would have been invested into the starport earlier. So just because of that scout, Dark knows, no pressure, chill out, he's gone three command centers, he's gone for a late Banshee, I'm in a pretty good position to drone up and just not take damage versus the non-cloak banshees. And so similar to the last game, I mean, apart from that faster third CC, Dark just with three queens in defense, and um, he, he's, he knows about the banshees, obviously, so the spores will come just in time, calling it early. Yeah. It's Marines waiting for that Overlord kill, but just exactly just like the previous game, and you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I'm a big believer in that. And I, think, and I think really he'll be greedy in this game, Doc. Yep. I think he'll drone completely up now. I, I think he's got maybe between 10 and 20 links, just 12. That's a very good number on the small side. And I don't think he'll build any more Zerglings, actually. I think he'll drone up that third heavily. And I don't think Tage is going to take the risk to run up that creep when there's three, four queens and some sort of link number that he doesn't know. Yeah, because Dark's going to force the engagement at the ramp, not up the ramp. Right. Which means that Tasia's not going to have that vision as he pokes him with the, with the Hellions. Although, that said, though, bit of an opening here. He could have potentially swapped, swapped through, but... Uh, no, uh, he's still droning. Yeah. He doesn't care. He, he actually he doesn't, doesn't at care. All. Yeah, he's dealing with his rocks, looking to take a fourth just down there, and he's only making he's only making drones. Yeah. Get the Bailey Nest back at home. If Tasia just ran past it, there would be openings, for sure. He's, he's not in. doing that. No, he's not. The bench is coming in for a bit more DPS, but Spore's already there. Creep yep. is denied, sure, but I mean, the Hellions haven't got any drone kills. The Banshee can't find a sweet spot to sit and kill drones for now either. It's going to be a little bit tough for Tasia to put the, the early game hurt on for Dark again. He's, he's put no early game hurt. Dark hasn't built units unnecessarily. He's got a great economy. He's going to take his fourth base very shortly because he's already got his macro hatch up. Everything is perfect for Dark in this game. But you can't go ahead and say that Tage is in a bad position because no. he's got a pretty good build himself. You know, the three command tents is very early, the double engineering bay pretty early as well. Um, he's added on production pretty late and he's taken his third base on position itself. The problem is he hasn't slowed Dark down. The creep spread is incredible. Tasia must fight in the mid game and he must deal damage and he must take good engagements. Otherwise, Dark is going to run away with this because he's gone untouched. It looks like Dark sending some lings around to try and possibly catch the Hellions on the retreat as the Queens bat them away from the front lines. Actually, it looks like they might be going for a run by instead. Banshee going to get some creep tumors here. 
on the right as it heads towards Hatchery Land. Yep. Tay's just moving out before Combat Shields. Usually you move out with Combat Shields, but he's just, I'm going with Stim and my hell and my Hellions that I have left yeah, over. He, I've got to slow this guy exactly. down. Exactly, yep. He knows, he's identified Dark's position and it's a good position. And these Link's gonna try for a run by, but there's uh, some Stim Marines back at home. They shouldn't get too much done here. And uh, looks like the war has begun on the creep. The armory is done, Hellbats are engaged. And that Spire just about to finish for Dark. Is he going to go for Corruptors again? Be interested to see. We will, uh, we will. We will find out. A couple of SCVs are going to yeah, go down actually, here. This is it. really surprising. I can't believe Dark got five SCVs kills with this run by. It was that, more than enough Marines back at home. That was a very nice uh, move there. Oh, the Banelings coming in and connecting actually. And the Hellbats getting a lot of them there. Wow. Dark's engagements. Snoot wasn't kidding. He's uh, killed five SCVs with a very small run by of about 10 Zerglings. He's now pushed this first attack back very easily. He's now droning up heavily towards his fourth base because he's again gone untouched. Oh. Similar work accounts, all things considered. I mean, Tasia has, uh, you know, apart from taking that uh, that SCV hit there, has been largely untouched in this game, but Dark completely untouched economy wise. Oh, another connection here. It does get uh, a little bit on that, a little bit of hurt on that uh, hell map, but it does still live. Where's Tasia's 2 2? Um, yeah. He hasn't started 2 2. He's got the armory, he's got the money. So. He's added on his extra production before adding on 2-2. He really needs that 2-2 starting. This is like the one of the most uh, crucial and uh, the biggest opportunity to be able to slow and kill the Zerg is when that 2-2 is done and then pushing 3-3. But Dark is running away with everything. Upgrades economy units. Yeah, he's looking even better this game. Combat um, Shields was forgotten even though he pushed out before. He oh. never got it after Stim. Wow. So a few blunders here from Tasia, but... I mean, the game is not over yet. He's, he's doing a bit of, he's engaging a little bit better here. And obviously that's amazing. If you can always get free kills like that for his Terran and just have the Banelings yeah. walk into a Widow Mine there. But, uh, you know, the, he, he's in a, he's not playing as crisp as he did game one. And, and Dark hasn't really, you know, he hasn't missed a beat at all. Yeah, he's chosen Mutilus this time as well as the, uh, the choice. He's going to be wanting to keep those as live uh, for as long as possible. Very expensive. Widowmines looking for that juicy bailing plus they didn't quite get it. The splits are quite good anyway. That was a good fight for Tasia. Yeah, very nice. Plenty of Marines left over, so the, the Mutas need to stay back. They can't get those those medivacs, which they really want. The Widowmines have been spent, which means that these Lings and these Banes are going to go off creep and try and get some bio, but the Marauders making things a little bit difficult. So now 2-2 is completed for Dark. He's going to be very good against this army, this Terran army. Yeah, actually, that's a lot of bio, so... Uh, the Banelings looking for a cluster, but still so many Marines alive, which means that, um, you know, Dark... Oh, losing to the Mutas there! That engagement not as amazing for Dark as his previous ones. That's, uh, he is going to clean it up after, after all things considered, but Tasia's rally is pretty substantial here with that early production. Yeah, both players just uh, headbutting each other in the sense of the map there. Yeah, they're just clashing, like two giant, two, two giant tidal waves. Dark playing his heart out there in that booth on stage. Really wants that game too. He would love yeah. to be 2-0 up on Tasia. That would take a lot of the pressure off. And the pressure has really probably been what's been keeping him back in these these uh, individual tournaments that he's been to every now and then. I have to agree. He's uh, been able to push Tasia back to his side of the map. He's able to respread creep, take his fifth base, and have some breathing room. Tasia doesn't have that hold Whoa. on him, which is very dangerous and can cause a lot of mistakes to, for Zergs to make when you're under that pressure. So a lot of energy there just being spent on those mules from Tasia. His income's about to look pretty good. 34 links being made for Dark. They are 2-2. He does still have the upgrade advantage. He's looking for anything that he can catch with these muters. A drop, anything like that for free would be great. As he heads towards the mineral line of Tasia. Tasia has seen the mutilus cluster. Different style from Dark this time. He's taken eight gases, which means he'd ideally like to get a heavy family count or actually to ideally start to build up this mutilus oh, count. A lot of fresh mules here. Taking some muter damage. A corruption on the CC as well. Why not when you have an overseer with your army? That's an interesting play you don't always see. Tasia moving across into the creep now. This is a scary army with a big cluster of Widowmines, actually. That's decent for Banelings if you found those Widowmines. They actually went straight past them. And Dark being pushed on the creep, but the Mutas are doing a lot of damage back at home. 17 SEV kills. Very simple. If these Banelings connect to the Marines, the game ends. Absolutely. Tasia's... He can't lose the army. He's lost so much of his economy back home. He's still losing his economy back home. And the Langs are looking for that cluster. The, 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 the Widowmines are actually in a bit of a rough spot for Tasia, and they go down without connecting on much at all. And he's a loaded Metamax here. A single Thor is just Im <laughs> embarrassingly... 31 SCVs have been destroyed by oh 14 Mutilists. Very, very small amounts of anti-air back at home as Dark comes around, kills off 30 SCVs. He also didn't kill 
Dark with that army that he had and Dark pushed that back. Look at the, the income difference between the two. 80 difference between, uh, I mean, 800 for Tasia, 2,200 for Dark. Wow. Th there's one big fight left in Tasia. That's it. He needs to get the damage done with this army because he is down 50 workers. And here comes a lot of banelings here, and there's not too many winter mines for Tasia. So this is going to be rough for him as he pulls back towards the, the what down here with the Thor. The Thor late to the party. GG Duck is going to take a 2-0 lead here in the series, and he's going to be feeling amazing getting into game number three. So much for my predictions, Apollo. They are looking very bleak right now. The Magic I'm... 8 Ball says outlook unlikely. It says no for Australia. <laughs> not today. Not today. And Tasia has met his match here at the World Championship. Has to turn this around now to win three games in a row. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be very, very difficult here for Tasia. But Dark has uh, brought what we wanted to see from him here. Yeah, you wanted to know which Dark was turning up today, and I think we've already decided. After game one and two, you can pretty much say, okay, this is the Dark we're seeing, and that is the tournament-winning Dark, the, the Pro League beast from 2014, who's gone all the way through. Korean qualifiers, you know how hard yep. they are to get in the category. You of all people know how hard they are to get through <laughs> a tournament like this. Not from experience, but from casting, From for casting, sure. exactly. Uh, the, the best of the best players come through the Korean qualifiers, and Dark is that player who could go the distance here in his debut tournament, he could he could go all the way. And I've mentioned it before this broadcast even begun before the tournament happened that I thought this this might happen from Dark. Mm. Tasia has got it within him despite being 2-0 down to be able to pull this to be 3-2. Absolutely in this best of five. But it's going to take absolutely everything that he's got within. He's had some pretty sick comebacks before. At Intel Extreme Masters, actually, he's had some comebacks. But... Uh... Oh man, look at this kid. He just he just doesn't seem stoppable after game one and two. And I, I gotta say though, Tasia kinda looked like he was wavering a bit in game number two. Mm. He wasn't his typical self. He, yeah. he he was he was making a few mistakes, you know, the late two two, the the arm the combat shields being yep. forgotten for a little while there. And they were forgotten. You don't just not make combat shield, there's no strategy behind that. Yep. Um so mistakes were made and Tasia is probably feeling the strength of this guy who has been playing He's been playing StarCraft 2 for a very long time now. I, I imagine from about 2011, 2012, Dark. And all he's been doing is playing every single day for years. Funny enough, the first time these two players met was in 2012, in November. They played in Code A, which Tasia did win two games to zero. But that just kind of shows the amount of time that Dark's been playing without any huge results. Back in 2012, they played. But 2015 is going to be a big year for this guy. And he's starting to show it in Pro League, getting huge wins after huge wins for his team and now playing in a big, big tournament. So it's going to be a good year for him. Absolutely, and we're going to have to wait for game number three. He's going to go to a short break, but please don't go away. It will be coming very soon. Hey guys, welcome back to the Intel Extreme Masters World Championship here in Katowice. Tasia in a rough spot to say the least, down 0-2 against SK Telecom's Dark. Yeah, our 11-time StarCraft II champion across the years in StarCraft II is looking like he's met his match already at the Intel Extreme Masters World Championship at the very get-go. This is only match two of the day here. We have four matches to come your way. Here in match two, we have Liquid Tasia currently down 0-2 against Dark, who is his, is his debut tournament. We talked over and over and over how he's been training for this very moment to be able to break out into the international scene. And everything is just falling into place for this 19-year-old. Everything is working for him. Yeah, and look at that statistic here. And that's why we were talking about him being a pro league beast. The most wins. He is incredible here. And obviously, Teja, with the most premier victories, has a lot of stats to back him up as well. You can't 
You can't say that Teja is out of this best of five. No way. We'll have to see if game number three is his saving grace. This guy on screen, it is Team Liquid's Teja. He's going to need a lot of love and a lot of support, as well as his hands to get through this one, as he is up against this guy here from SKT1. This is Dark. The round of eight, so close, he can taste it. He's so close. Just one more game. The dark hype is real, Apollo. The dark hype is real. This is a perfect map here for Tasia to at least get one map on the scoreboard. Yeah. Catalina is Terran favored in every single matchup here. Not heavily, but it definitely does favor Terran. Normally, just because of the way that the spawning positions are, um, especially in these positions, if the Reaper expansion was to be used, which it looks like we are going to yeah. see, the way the Reaper travels toward the Zerg is very fast. Super fast. They're very close uh, because the Reaper can jump up and down the cliffs. And then the longer the game goes, there's a lot of airspace for drops to do well. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of space that the Zerg player has to cover from different drops and different types of pushes. Exactly. And you know, it is a great Reaper map. And also, you have to bring up the fact that the third for the Zerg is very awkward to take on this map as well. It's a little bit tough to hold against Hellbat pushes if Tasia wanted to go. I've seen Tasia do an incredible Hellbat push in this map before in this exact spawning location against um, Solar and C yeah. tournaments back in the day. So, I mean, this is a, a great map for Tasia. And yeah, you're absolutely right. If he's going to win a map here, this has got to be it. If he doesn't win this map, I would be actually, you know, well, if he doesn't look amazing in the early game in this map, I would, I'd be actually very surprised. He's got to start this game off with just the best type of Reaper Micro that you can offer. He's chosen to go for the 11 Barracks and 11 Gas, which is going to push him towards three Reapers before he expands. Mm -hmm. If he can get drone kills, Zirkling kills, and put the pressure onto Dark and just gain small leads from the very get-go, is the type of player that can carry that into the mid-game and then look for a killing blow later on. On the flip side of things, if Dark pushes this back easily without taking much damage, I'm going to start to get very nervous for Tasia's tournament. Yeah, uh, if he gets like a cluster of drone kills here, some queen damage, maybe even a queen kill, that would be amazing, but it's a little bit tough for three Reapers all on their lonesome. Yeah. Heading across the map here. Dark is in such a comfortable position. Even if he loses this next map, the one after is Expedition Lost. A nice Zerg map for him to fall back onto in the next one. And then the, the last map becomes Tricky, which is where Teji is going to be obviously aiming towards, which is going to be Inferno Pools. So we'll see very if we get that far. And if it does get that far, it's very spawn dependent, that map. So it'll be interesting to see if they do get to game number seven. We all want game number, sorry, game number five. We all want to see game number yep. five. Yep. The more Starcraft, the better, I always say. So, so far, so good with the Reaper. He's just got to keep this up. That's right, yeah. Free kills so far. No damage at all. Nothing at the natural for him to kill, but the second Reaper coming along will definitely help out a lot against this small link count, which, yep. uh, you know, at this time of the time of the game, is obviously going to be speedless. And, um, you know, the Queen can't really help at this point, so... The Reaper's getting a fair bit of hurt done. This last Reaper coming down to help out his brother-in-arms. Yeah, he's killed two Zerglings so far. Yeah, actually, this is a relatively hurt Reaper. He is coming up here before he's healed quite a bit, and that Queen actually got a bit far off creep, so he can get a few more Zerglings kills here. The third Reaper about to arrive as he heads across the map. And Six additional Zerglings have been forced yeah. out here from Dark, and feeling that's the pressure. That's, that's like, even though he hasn't killed drones, that is damage yep. to make the Zerg push out Lings instead of drones. That's yep. actually great. So, so far, very good for Tejas, and it's exactly what he wants on this map to start this off. Yeah, got to connect the main oh, and the natural. Is he going to get that Kree Oh, could potentially get it if he right-clicked on it, and he does get it. Oh, that's a great pickup, actually. Not enough queens and not enough queen energy to put that tumor back down, which means that the natural and the main are going to be unconnected for quite a while here so as Tasia transitions to Hellions. Four Zerglings, a creep tumor, successful start here for Tasia. Yeah, exactly what he wanted from those three Reapers. And like I said, I would be surprised if he didn't have an amazing looking early game. Yep. So far, it's very, very good. And he's going to he's gonna pull back with the Reapers now. He could have stayed for longer, and he probably could have tried to get a couple more drones or more Zerglings. But he doesn't want to risk it by losing the Reapers, because his plan, with double gases down, Hellion Banshee. But they are going to be joined together with the Reapers, which is a very powerful combination of units when micro precisely, yes. which he's going to be aiming to do as he started off with these Reapers. And Dark is going to have a hard time against that unless he pulls off some brilliant defense. And he actually might be able, if he's really lucky, he could catch a Reaper or two here with this, this Ling run by speed. is finished now, so he's just looking for anything heading across the map, any kills whatsoever. Yeah. Tasia's willing to sacrifice one of the Reapers just for information. He knows that this Reaper's in, in a lot of trouble because Zirkling speeds out, but he wants to know if he's about to be all in or not, if he's about to get attacked by a lot of Roaches and Banelings. And he finds out that he's not. 
Yeah, seeing that third hash re, seeing that queen, seeing the gas count in the main, he's pretty confident he's going to be just mm. fine here. Notice how Tej is waiting around, because the Reaper's on the other side of the map, but he's like, why aren't you chasing yeah, him? Yeah, where are the links? Like exactly. If there's no links here, he's putting two, to, two and two together. He's a clever boy. Yeah, so he's just waiting. He, he knows that the run by is inevitable, and he's waiting for it. He's going to look for it, actually, now. He's, he's going to look for it. Yeah, he knows it's there, and he'll find it, too. Dark will have to, have to am scray as he yeah, does. Yeah, he ran away. Dark ran away there. Yep. Uh, great intelligence star sense yeah. from uh, Tasia. And the armory has been placed down by Tasia. Oh, the so hell bats. He's investing even more into this attack. And just think, every resource that he throws into this is the third command center delaying itself and his economy hindering itself because of that. He's going to try to do damage. There's no Roach Warren. There's no Bailey Ness. These are two structures which have been missing every single game so far yeah. from Dog. And Tasia's looking to exploit that. And he's going to have, for his defense, He's going to be having Spore Crawlers, which are useless except against the Banshee, and he's going to have to deal with Hellbats with just Queens and Lings, Apollo, and that's a tough ask. Oh, nice little run by here, actually catching a couple of the Hellions. Ah, that run by comes to Very bite, nice. He knew it was around somewhere, but he wasn't going to wait around forever to find it. Hellbats have been morphed here. It's Hellbat time. These Queens are in trouble as they're pushing them this third. The run by of, of Dark has killed six Zerglings, uh, sorry, six SCVs so far. But how much will the Hellbats do? They can bring down this hatchery, and if that hatchery d is eliminated, Tasia is going to be in a great yeah. position. He doesn't care about losing SCVs if he kills that hatchery. Yeah. Well, only seven SCVs. If he kills a hatchery, that's incredible. Spine crawl is coming up here, but they're going to get killed before they even finish. The bench being picked up is nice. The Hellbats, can they get the job done, though? They're starting to dwindle in numbers. The Lings and the Queens are getting the job done, and Dark is going to hold here. Great defense there by Dark against the Hellbats without the Roach Warren, without the Baneliness. He makes the hold with Queens and Zerglings with being able to destroy, what was it, six uh, SCVs, about five, six SCVs how did, of Tasia? How did that even happen? It was just Lings and Queens against like six or seven Hellbats. It's incredible. It's incredible, and now you've got the cloak that was invested into that is trying to maximize even more damage from this. Tasia's uh, hit a brick wall. Oh no, he's actually going to lose his Banshee as well. Oh, just taking the control of it then. He didn't have it selected. The Hellions coming through, they will be held that shortly, but uh, not much to be done here. Yeah. The Queen's already in position. Third command center incredibly late. Engineering base coming in late as well. Uh, Banshee's still being able to uh, get a bit of money from this, and maybe these Hellions can as well. Oh, actually, yeah, big transfer. You could be right here. He's getting enough to five drone kills. The other six, that's 11 yeah. so far. Okay, salvaging oh, the situation yeah. a little 13 bit. 13 drone kills all up. Very nice. Yeah, salvaging this. Really nice. This Banshee in a very great, is in a wonderful position. Uh, in between the bases where units have been transferred back and forth, there's no spore crawl, there's no detection. Tasia's doing actually kind of well to recover. Yep, and the Hellions are still alive. This queen is just about to go down. Transfuse goes down for her. Banshee up in the sky doing a lot of hurt. Cloaking again, no spore crawler in range. Obviously no Overseer seer because no lair or anything like that, so... Very nice from Tasia. If he hadn't done this type of damage, he was in so much trouble. Oh, there we go. Roach Warren is going to be the choice here for Dark. Hellion's looking for more... Oh, I mean, Dark's just... We're going to try and find a surround here on the Hellions. He does get a few of the back, but there's just not enough links. And another Queen. Mm. And Dark was probably expecting Tasia to halt Hellion production because you don't really build excess amounts of Hellions because you use the factory to build reactors to help the marine production. But as we can see, there are no marines because he didn't start marine production very early on. Instead, investing heavily into the Hellions, which did get the damage he wanted. And he's still investing heavily into the Hellions. He's going to get also, the plus one attack for them. By, by the way that the amount of Hellions are being made, and I, and I think that Dark's starting to change his mind a little bit, I think he was confused. I think he thought Mech was going to be played yeah, because of the amount of Hellions and Banshees, but he's now got an Overseer in there, switching his upgrades from missile attacks back into melee attacks, getting rid of the infestation pit. Yeah, it actually looked like he wanted to go for Swarmos. Yeah, you're right. So um, going back into the melee, going to try and go for Spire as instead. Yeah. And uh, I mean, the Roach Warren is still getting uh, Glee Lord Constitution, but um, we'll see how many Roaches. I don't think well, we'll see too many Roaches in this game. At the moment, the way the dog's playing by getting Roach Speed, unless he. Yeah, oh, he's going to go mind. for it. So, wow. what I think he's going to do here get Roach Speed, um, get a lot of Roaches, probably get the Bailing Speed, and try like a Roach Zirkling attack without investing into the Spire and using it so much. Spire is going down. Hellions getting some creep shimmers with the Marines here. It's this, just Banshees, no Metamax or anything like that, so... This attack could be huge. Uh, the Banshees are going to be a problem. So if he could eliminate them somehow with the Queens. Yeah, it's three Banshees versus three Queens, though, with a lot of bio on the ground, so four Queens with the Overseer. I, I think that Dark has is, is pretty much said to himself, you've invested so much into Hellion and Banshees that Whoa. you don't really have much of a ground force. And if you can overwhelm this third base with Roaches and Speed... 
taken this third base out of the equation, he finds himself in a yeah. wonderful position. And the Banshees need to come home now. He needs to be on the defensive because seeing that many roaches on the field, you've got to be a little bit worried and lock things down at home. He doesn't want to be taking yeah. too many SCV kills here. Now, well, Roche Speed is done, but he is building a couple more drones towards this location. Is Dark going to try and well overwhelm this position, or...? Doesn't look like he's going to try. Scan's going down more, creep being denied here. This is a lot better for Tasia actually, um, than last few games, getting a lot of the creep stymied. But it is still quite scary for Darks, pushed very, very far towards the Terran base. Yeah, Overseer with the Queens, going to hopefully try to bring these Banshees down. A lot of circling's being made now. 2-2 two -two upgrades are almost complete. That is another advantage that Dark has through the way that the game played out with the late third command center, the late engineering base. He's going to have 2-2 two -two versus 1-1. One -one. He's building more and more units. Is he waiting for an attack or is he going to attack is the next part we need to find out. Well, Bailing's being morphed here. He is still sort of staying very deep on the creep and Tasia scans and sees all of it and still decides that he wants to try and pressure a little bit here. The Widow Mine's getting, getting a few uh, Zerlin kills, not much at all. And the Roaches and the Bailings are heading forward into Dark, but also into Tasia, but Tasia just has too much. He's got a nice big concave with the bio as well. And he's pushing Dark back deep into his creep here. Uh-oh. He's putting on the pressure. Banshee's coming back to help out as well. But that one sport fall is going to be the MVP. Actually, the Bailing's looking really good as they collect with it out of the fire, but plenty of Tasia's left over. The Metamax have really helped out here as they've come to join the fight. The Roach is on the left. Uh, putting a bit of hurt on the fire. The fire is very, very damaged from stims and all sorts of damage, but is it too much from Tasia? It looks like so far it is. Well, the, the Corruptors coming out, they're going to help in this fight. This is. Dark has played this kind of weird little game where Tasia's just like build up an army and, and march forward with a good mix of Dark's army. But with Corruptors coming out to eliminate the Banshees and the Roaches getting close to these Marines without yeah. the correct upgrades, he will push this back. Yeah, the boost from the Metavax there, knowing that he needs to pull all the way back. Losing the Metavax is horrifying. Losing Bio, not as bad. So, I mean, he can, he can continue Bio, bio pushes if... Uh, <laughs> he's actually rallying units over Creep there. And now the advantage of the upgrades from Dark is gonna... It's, it's gonna be gone now because 2 is about to complete for Tasia in about 15 seconds. Yeah, Failing's looking for a good connection, but once again, Tasia finding that position just off the creep and denying tumors as he goes, but I mean, the tumors in the middle of the map are making, were making things a bit sticky for Tasia there, but um, he's uh, fixed up his rally path, but the tumors will continue. He didn't actually see that drop, so Tasia could potentially be hitting on a couple fronts here. Yeah, a lot of units on the way here for Dark. Likewise for Tasia, who starts his plus three attack. On the hunt for a medivac here. Yeah. He's, he's going to find it. He's, and it's out of boost as well, so bye-bye medivac. Oh. Bailings on the roaches. Again, Tasia just on the edge of the creep. Just one step and not overextending too much, but these these marines somehow under the under the cluster of uh, corruptors there. I'm not yeah. sure how that happened. Very good uh, 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 creep careering here for Tasia. Is there's only a couple of tumors left. Yeah, just a few active ones here. The widow mine's not finding incredible connections. Ow! Speaking of incredible collections, uh, pretty good there for Dark as he takes a lot of the bio away from Tasia. And not too many corruptors in the sky as uh, Tasia's Metavax, which are out of energy, are actually uh, going to live for now. The Banelings doing a bit of the damage, the four Roaches on the back. More Banelings are connect connecting with a lot on the ground there, but... Uh, mm, big, big uh, siege tank hit there as well. Tasia is just... Uh, He's holding Dark for now. Yeah, he's holding Dark in this position. They've been trading very equally, but this is in favor of Tasia. Uh, Dark doesn't have a superior economy. And also with Tasia closing in on 3-3 and keeping Dark low on units, this is only getting better and better for Tasia. That's right. He's getting the uh, the Bailings there. There might just actually be too many Zoglings, and it does look like it is. So he just has to pull up and pull back towards the rest of his reinforcements. And once again, Tasia is just headbutting against Dark, and he's not really gaining too much ground. Yeah, uh, I mean, Dark needs to hold on, but he also not... To hold on, he survives in the game. To take a winning fight, he gains himself a lead. And he needs to find that lead, because with plus three attack on the way, this is only going to get harder. Yeah, and Tasia... Not it was target firing the Bailings at the beginning of that engagement, loses that siege tank there. Yeah, there, that, was, that was a lo losing fight for Dark. He lost that fight. And now he's in trouble because it was all about holding on to survive, getting a, a good fight to, to lead in the game, but losing a fight means he's in so much trouble. Plus three attack, closing in, the creep hasn't been respread, and Tej is getting momentum on this left flank. He is indeed. He could start uh, leapfrogging the mines a little bit as well, which would definitely help the bio as he's heading towards that uh, that fourth hatchery of Dark. And Dark's actually going up to... He's, he, he's, on, um, he's on five hatcheries here. They're pretty well saturated as well. The Ling's coming across, finding some Hellbats, but the Hellbats really... <laughs> Did a lot of Ling damage before they went down. This Ling run by not looking incredible for Dark. And this actually 
So quite a bit of bio here. Going to deflect Dark while putting some hurt on the hatchery, but at least Dark doesn't take hatchery damage here. Um, yeah, he's going to lose all these units though. Manages yeah, to pick off eight SUVs and some of the reinforcements that were making their way down south, but he's going to lose everything in return. Yeah, there's no escape, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide for the Zerglings. The Bandling's being target fired without getting too much done here as well. And Dark's just head across through the top here. The reinforcements from Tasia make this a really odd decision with the Banelings. Yeah, and, and now tasia has got his whole army together. There's no more counterattacks. There's no more run by from Dark available. He must take a direct engagement, and this is where Tasia's going to excel in. He's got a much higher army supply. He's got a tank in good position. He's got Widowmines in support, and he's got those better upgrades. Unfortunately, Dark wasn't able to find an angle to gain yeah. a lead in the last five minutes. Tasia incredibly ahead at this point. He's up... <laughs> He's up almost 80 supply in army at this point, and Dark is just dwindling. He's making 30, link, 30 links at a time, but that's just not enough against plus three bio. It's got to be three, three bio as well. Yeah. And I mean, even the tanks have plus two. This is incredible for, for Tasia. It's going to be, I can't see him losing from this point as he heads towards the fourth hatchery of Dark. Dark on the ropes here. The Ling's coming in, but Tasia smells blood in the water. He's all over this. Big hit here with the, the Banelings and the bio, but still just too much left for, for Tasia. And uh, he just, he can't get a surround, he can't get a run by, he can't get a flank. Tasia is just, is looking like he's gonna get himself a map here. Tasia says, uh, 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 no way, Dark, there is no way that I'm being eliminated 3-0 in the round of 16 That's at the right. World Championship. And he comes around and he will take this map, there is no doubt now. That's absolutely right, GG from Dark, the hatchery goes down. Tasia chance from the crowd, and is the momentum shifting a little bit? I mean, that was a map with great spawns for Tasia, great map for Tasia. And like you said, we're heading in yeah. towards a map for game number four, which is going to be quite good for Dark. There is there is no way that an 11-time StarCraft II champion comes to a world championship. And remember, an Intel Extreme Masters champion from this season. Relevance right there. There is no way that he's going to come in and be like, okay, I'm just going to get 3-0 and I'm going back to Korea. <laughs> no. Tasia puts up the fight and we will go to game four. Absolutely. More StarCraft, the better. Game number four is going to be on Expedition Lost. Now talk about TVZ on Expedition Lost. You were mentioning that this is good for Dark. Explain to me how this is good for Dark. It's a good map for Dark. Zergs feel comfortable on this. There's not too many difficult uh, strategies that you need to deal with from the Terran. And the more important aspect of this is the back rocks that cause nightmares for Terran plays, forcing them to be very, very defensive. They've got to think about Roach plays that can come up from the main ramp and also come from the from towards the back. Yeah. But that I'm sure Teji is going to be well aware of. Yeah, and the Zergs want those rocks down. So the, the rocks actually benefit the Zergs completely once they get that extra entry Correct. into the main. They can get to that hatchery if they take that that, uh, that hatchery with the rocks connect to. All of a sudden they have more reinforcement paths. They can right. come from the ramp, they can come from the main. It's, it's uh, very, very nice, but obviously the Terran doesn't want more entrances into their main Apollo. That's not something you ever want as a Terran. Absolutely not. You've got to be really focused on your defense from the run-bys. Run-bys can cause nightmares. Being able to get into the SCV line, destroying SCVs is not what you want. You don't want roach attacks coming from this when you have limited amount of units to defend them, and that could be a type of strategy that we see coming out from Dark. But at the same time, that isn't necessarily how Dark likes to play. He's the more defensive player. He isn't the type of aggressive player that we see the players like Life try these plays or Hyun try these plays. So it'll be interesting to see the way that Dark approaches this map. And likewise, Tasia, does he play ultra defensive thinking that these type of plays can come in? Overall, I think that Tasia is going to be very happy that he's got a map on the board and he knows that he's a player that when he's on form, challenges for these types of championships, not just trying to make it to the round of eight or not. Yeah, he, he, he's not going to be happy with the round of 16 elimination as all. He, he, he wants round of eight, he wants round of four and deeper. And Dark here, he's looking to make history. He's looking to, to set some records for himself as an individual player in individual leagues. I mean, it's very important to be to be at these international tournaments. I mean, this one of all, this is the international tournament right now in 2015 is the end of uh, Intel Extreme Masters season. And what better tournament to, to break some records for Dark? And just thinking back to Tasia playing at BlizzCon a couple of months back, it felt like he had met his match when he went up against Sue, who plays a very similar style to Dark in the way that he's very macro-oriented, very defensive. And it felt when I was casting those games with Artosis that there was no way that Tasia could match the macro of Sue. But then we saw Tasia just go to a different level that he'd never really been to before. And it was only in the round of 16 at BlizzCon. And we all said to ourselves, there's no way he can do it. And he was able to match, if not be better, at 
the late game and long type of game than Sue was at that point. So if we do see these longer types of games, Tasia has it within him to bring exactly what Dark can do too. That's right. And unfortunately, before we get into game number four, we do have to take a short ad break for the players here. Just for five minutes or so as we gear up for game number four here at the Intel Extreme Masters Katowice between Tasia and Dark. We'll see you guys soon.
G'day StarCraft fans, welcome back. So we're gearing into game number four between Atasia and Dark. Apollo, do you feel like the momentum is shifting a little bit here after that game? I don't think so. Me I mean, either. obviously it has a little bit, but not so much that Tej is definitely going to come into this one looking for a victory very easily. I feel that Dark has played map number one and map number two almost perfect. Game number three was just a little bit wonky. I think he got very surprised by the amount of Hellions. He didn't really know the strategy choice of Tej, whether it be Mech or Bio. And then he tried to play Roaches, which can work when the, when the Bio force is low, but the higher the Bio gets, the worse the Roaches become. So I don't think he played that too well. And coming into game number four, it's like a clean sleep for Dark, the way he can come in and be like, okay, let me just do what I did in game number one and two, and you have no chance. He's hit the reset button here. So, as we're gearing in game number four, let's do the intros for these players in the top right here. From Team Liquid winning the last game, can he tie the series? This is Tasia. Oh, I think the crowd's feeling a little bit of that momentum shift. Follow in the bottom left here from SKT1. Can he close the series 3-1? This is Dark. Never mind, just as much hype for this nerd as well. Since 2012, Tasia has won at least three championships every year. We're in 2015 <laughs> now, he hasn't won one yet. Will this be his first? That's disgusting. But what a stat. <laughs> Imagine just being that good at StarCraft. I know, you know, we're, we're not quite there yet, Apollo. And we need a few more ladder games to get there, but... Uh... Sadly, we are not. Sadly not. We'll have to watch these guys do it instead. Dark has decided to send a drone out very, very early on here. Yeah. Me. And it's not looking for a two racks. No, it's actually going straight be, to the base. It's going straight to the base here. So does he have plans to build a hatchery somewhere around Tasia because tasia has been opening up command center first every game? It'd or is he just wanting to look at the insides? Having a look at Tasia's insides. Looks like so far that is, that is the plan here for Dark. So he gets a good look here and sees a saturated middle line. I mean, yeah. what else are you going to see early game against Turn? Maybe that's the way he wanted to... I mean, if he was going to check for proxies, it's better to look around right. the base so, rather than at the Terran's main. So, so he can delay the command center for a little bit from being planted. He may even decide to go three hatchery before spawning pool as well. Knowing that this is a command center first build that doesn't have any Marines, Hellions out at all yeah. very early on compared to a normal. It's very true, actually. Uh, think about it. The drone scout in the end I thought was a little bit silly. The Dark is making me look silly, as he often does. Yeah, he hasn't decided to go for the third hatchery. Instead, taking an Extractor first, uh, and then the Spawn and Pool will follow. So by choosing the Extractor first, he can have 100 gas at the time that the Spawn and Pool completes, which means he can get Zergling speed very early on. Does he want to try to build a flood of Zerglings to overwhelm this natural before Hellions come out, that way he could force a lift, get Supply Depot kills, Marine kills, does he want to use that gas maybe instead of Zirkling Speed to try very, very early roaches? Yeah, I mean... Like the, six roaches or something? With the gases you could, but like you said, Dark generally not the player that, that goes for that right. roach aggression. But I mean, that said though, he, he knows himself and he might be able to pull a fast one here by going for that option. There's he a lot, may. Of, lot, of, lot of choices open for him. And Tasia goes in and spots that the extract has been uh, been built and that we are going to have that roughly 100 gases as spawn and pull completes. And these sort of, th these sort of things... and. The thought process will be happening for Tasia now. Everything that we just went through will be going through Tasia's mind as well. What Probably exactly is faster. this planning? And a lot faster. <laughs> it took me 30 seconds to say all that, and Tasia, yeah. it was instantly there. That's right. Computer brain, Tasia. And he's going to need everything he can get to get himself a tired series here. Is well, the, well, Dark is still mining gas, and he's up to 124. He hasn't started Zergling speed. He's still mining with three, and there's there the Roach Warren. So this is the choice that he's going to try to exploit that tasia has gone for command center, first, command center first and doesn't have that many units. Yeah, and then when you go for this roach attack, you pretty much only have to deal with Hellions and a couple Marines, yeah. you know. And it's, it's not like a super all-in. It's just, I'm going to kill as many SCVs as I can to gain myself a huge lead. And then if I can kill you, great. If I kill all your SCVs, great. And then he can always fall back to taking a third base and building drones and so on. Yeah, so Roach Aggression on the cards here for Dark. The Ling's coming in here seeing a single bunker and uh, knows from the amount of damage taken on that uh, Ling that there's not too much bio out for, for Tasia either. Tasia's aiming towards third command center. The second gas hasn't been taken. Uh -oh. He's not looking to be able to build that starport. And when you go for Greed while there's Roaches on the map, Apollo, doesn't always go well Whereas for the Terran player. There's a third command center, very fast. Mm -hmm. And Dark is going against how he usually plays, as we've said. Is Dark going to try something like this? And yes, he is. Nine Roaches are on the way. 
Ten. Ten roaches. Wow, that's a lot of investment to this attack. But you know what? Everything on the field right now, it does kind of look like it's going to okay. work pretty well. Okay, Tej is sending out a unit to try to figure out what's going on. It's in the center of the map. He's got a Marine Tours back to stop an overlord from going in. But this SCV is important. It depends. He's got to find out what's going on. The Tech Lab is on the way in the barracks. He'd, ha he'd have to start Marauder production instantly. He's going to see them immediately. Yeah, they come here it's just as they pull through the rocks and the, the SCV sees and reacts immediately as well. He pulls it yeah. back. And Tasia has as much reaction time as he could possibly want from the middle here. He's going to have to drop extra bunkers. Yep. And Marauders the order production start. has begun. Yep. So you know, if he there's gets no Banshee. The Hellions are going to have to... I mean, he's got to use every single unit he can. Yeah, Marauders need to be in those bunkers. SCVs need to be on those bunkers. Stat, as the attack from Dark does head across the map. This is holdable. It is holdable. But how many SCVs will he lose in this? Now, well, time will tell here as the Roach is coming forward. They're looking for SCV kills. They want to bust through this wall and get some real hurt on. One Roach is going to go down. The bunker still alive for now. Two, three SCVs, four SCVs go down. And the bunker, first bunker falls, but there is a Marauder in this bunker, which is going to help out Tasha a lot. And he heads into the natural. This is what Dark wants here. SCVs, big juicy SCV kills. And remember behind this, only drones are being made. So the difference in workers is just a world apart. Absolutely. One Roach being caught there. Nice little pick off. But the Roaches are looking for the main now. There's only one Marauder up here. They have to join from the bunker and unload. Just, this, this is such an annoying spot for the Roaches to be in between the main ramp and the natural. Just, put, just nestled at the top there. You can't resaturate the natural. You just lose SCVs every time you want to. And uh, 10 SCVs killed by this, by this Roach attack, Apollo. Yeah. A really bit of a bit of an awkward start for Tay. I mean, there's a lot of supply and a lot of money invested into these roaches, but like you said, he's only been making drones back at home. And he's so. going for a two-base spire. So is he going to be ready with the infrastructure that he's kind of been slowed down with to deal with Mutalist that I would imagine is the natural follow-up here? Tasia does deal with it and he does clean it up, but the difference in workers is going to be in favor of Dark as this completes. The layer is complete, and I would imagine that the spire is the next choice. No, Nidus. it's a Nidus swim. He's going to choose a Nidus swim. No speed in Queens. This bowler. And then look at the back here. On yeah, the right hand side, spot. there is an Overlord with a perfect position on the right hand side here that is that is inside the main base of Tasia. It's actually, he's just sending the Marine down now and oh. he can actually put, put, push back this Overlord. Very nice there from Tasia. He's looking around. He's trying to figure out what the follow up is. He sees the late third. He scans. He's trying to figure it out. What does he see inside the main base? Does he see the Nidus? No, he only just sees the Roach. He sees Warrior. Roach speed, though. He sees Roach speed being built. Yeah, so he knows Roaches are still going to be used here from Dark. He hasn't given up on He's them just yet. He's cancelled on the Nidus Worm. He's switched out Spire and Evolution Chambers. Mm -hmm. Mind games from both players here. Just little changes going through. When you're this great at StarCraft, it's really a wonderful uh, privilege to see. Yeah. Evo Chambers going down for switching into the... Into the uh, into the ground force here, yep. switching his ground force, I should say. Even though Dark has a higher supply, I think Tej is in a pretty decent spot. Third command center very early on. He's got a very good economy. He's recovered very well. I think his defense was rather good. He was poking in and out the bunkers, and he dealt with the roaches. I think a lot of other players with a lot of lots would have lost a lot more drones. And um, he was checking for the follow-up. He's got faster upgrades than his opponent. But yeah, he is tucked in on two bases because he, he's a little bit worried to move out and take his third. So if he moves out and takes his third now, great, because he's, he's in a wonderful position to do it. There isn't an attack coming, but he's sitting tight, building tanks, a little bit worried about the follow-up, another SCP yeah. coming out, another scan coming into play. He doesn't know the follow-up, but he's upon that scan, he knows it's yeah. a normal game. Go take your third. So he can salvage these bunkers now and get himself that quick expansion, and they do go down. So uh, yeah, Teja needs to get that economy up. He's got plenty of workers. Pretty much equal on the Zerg, which is amazing considering the damage that he took from those roaches. It's uh, really quite nice for Tasia. Getting those rocks down. Now, with the rocks down, does have another entrance to the main, but he'll be able to uh, take the, uh, will saturate the CC and be able to rally to defend it, I guess, at this point. So, uh, Darks, oh, look at those active creep tumors, Apollo. They are once again getting kicked into gear here. Yeah, this is uh, going to be very important to spread creep on the right-hand side here. And also, I mean, on the left is important because that's probably... Oh, no, he's not. He's taking his fourth to the, to the far right. So creep spread is super important pushing up to that past that Zelnaga tower. And this, likewise, is going to be a position where Tasia, very shortly upon Medivac's arriving, is going to be looking to clear up. Yep. Actually, stimming a few Marines here for the scout just to have a look and see what's going on. Caesar Mutalisk. Knows that is indeed what's going on. Medivac's a little bit uh, slow into this game, uh, as he was building tanks before and wasn't building the starport. Yeah, so a stim, a stim on, this, on these units will actually be very costly without the Medivacs. And also, if he gets a wraparound with Lings, there's no evacuation. No. So he's got to be very careful yeah. not to lose these units. Very true. Bailing Nest is done. 11 Bailings are on the way, and that's what he really needs to be worried about here, losing this bio. He scans ahead. He's not looking for that fourth, though. 
He doesn't feel like it's there yet, so he's just concentrating on the third hatchery here for now of Dark. Yeah, I think he realizes if he overextends here, every single unit could die. There's a lot of Zerglings and Bailings out. Yeah, to be very careful. Only just two now. The, the, the first Medivac's just now popping out for, for, uh, for Tasia. And he's not stimming either. There's the stim now from Tasia as the Medivacs are out. And trying to target fire the Bailings. He does a decent job of it so far. He's a little bit at the front, but the Roaches what? back from Dark are overextending here. And they're getting pushed back. What type of fight was that from Dark? A bad one, Apollo. Tasia is just going to keep pushing here. He's getting a lot of kills on the way back. He's going to get some creep as well. Yeah, he's going to get even more too. He knows that right now, uh, Zerg is offline. They don't have bailings out. And that was a bad fight from Dark. He's yeah. making mistakes. Absolutely. And a player like Tasia is not going to let you get away with that. No, he punished. He definitely punished. He got a lot of creep from that. He killed off the, the remaining roaches. He got a Mutalus or two as well. Yeah, the Muta count for Dark is uh, quite small right now, so he can't really go into a main and kill an incredible amount of workers or anything like that. A rally could actually just kill yeah. them, and they can't really engage the Metabacks either. Oh, looks like a run by here on the ground. Nice decision here from Dark before that wall goes up, but the Stim Marines at home already just from the rally, which will clean this up if Dark tries to push this through. And Tasia is actually going to go for attack on this third. Actually, nice connections there with the Bailings, but still a lot of Marines left over on that ramp there. And he's got a great big concave and not too many banelings from Dark. The target fire good enough here from Tasia. Just lifts up a few units. There's still a few units on the bottom doing a bit of hurt. And Lings uh, have found that they're still in that third base. He's got five wow. SCV kills. He's only got like four or five Lings left over, but the Ling marker is keeping them keeping alive for now. And that actually looks very similar to that Deadwing game where just, yeah. just a few Lings managed to get five SCV kills because uh, they only just had enough to clear up the bio. Tasia was very eager to take that fight on the third base. And as you pointed out, his splits weren't the best. And Bailey's did get good detonations, combining with a couple of workers that went down on this base by that run by, which brought Tasia back first of all. And then, you know, he took the economy damage. Tasia didn't have the best couple of moments there. And Dark was able to drone up 11 drones towards that fourth base. Um, he's got a lot of freedom to respread that creep cool. now. That one winner mine still there, being a little bit annoying for Dark getting a drone on the transfer there. So I mean, if if you know if you identify the drone transfer, you'd know about that fourth. But uh, at the moment, as as it is, Tasia's still unaware. Yeah, an overseer needs to be built or at least brought in. There it is. Yep, down it goes. Um, so Tasia, did he see that fourth location? Is he going to try no, and deal with it? No, he's but just going to he's just going to deal with that uh, deal he, with that third for now. He's probably guessing that it's down here, so he's going to set up camp on the Zell Naga Tower. Winner mine's in good positions. Try to bring that creep down again. Good Ooh, micro nice there off. from Tark. Yeah. Oh, actually nearly lost a Muta there, but didn't lose a Muta, which is an important fact that you re regen so incredibly fast. So the big problem is there's no crease spread on that fourth base of Dog. That this area is perfect for Tasia to be working around. Yeah. He's still not pressuring towards it, though. This drop in the main is nice because he knows that all the Mutalisks are on the other side of the map, and there could be potentially a, quite a few drone kills here. There's that drop. In the main, getting a bit of hurt on. Doesn't micro, actually. It looks like he's going to lose quite a few to the, to, the, to the Banelings, and he has to pull out. Tasia's right. just, uh, yeah, just keeping that watchtower away from Dark and not really pressuring onto the creep too much. Yeah, he knows his fourth base is down there by now. So yeah, he, he has, has to, to push the issue. He can't allow Dark to just mine freely from this. The drop of the main is cleaned up. Does he lose the medevac as well? No, the medevac just escapes. And the muters can't really chase it either. They need to be here to deal with the medevacs and what? with the widow mines here of Tasia. Dark's got a lot of bane links. Does indeed. Plenty of them heading towards the buyer, the Widow Mines, looking for a nice connection, but they actually hit it. Oh my god, that connection to the Banelings on the buyer, that was brilliant for Dark. And the Mutas are actually going right and diving straight onto the Metamax here. Plenty of Banelings left over, and he's pushing well up the creep here, going to try and find a nice cluster of buyer. They're very hurt, and another cluster of buyer goes down. Dark pressing Tasia all the way back here into the third, and somehow, some way, This could be it, this could be where Dark eliminates Tasia. All the SCVs are being pulled out of the, out of the third now. A reinforcement, will it be enough here from Tasia? He does have the ramp down, so he can reinforce nice and quickly. Here come the Zirkling flood. He's going to try uh -oh. and overwhelm this position. If he morphs Bailey's just outside the radius and tries to take this location, if he takes this location, he will eliminate Tasia in the round of 16 and move on to his first round of eight. And it looks really good here. The SCVs are starting to go down to the Zerglings. The Mute is in the sky, completely uncontested. The Marines are just trying to hold the ramp from the run by here. 13 SCVs have gone down. There's one Bailey looking for those really hurt SCVs as they head into the natural. Can the Mutas and the Zerglings on the ground end the game here, but Dark is still rallying Zerglings across. Tasia has made mistakes in engagements, and Dark is pouncing on the opportunity to move on to the next round. He's pushed Tasia all the way back. He's not mining from his third. The SCVs are coming up That's the line, it. and we may have our first third going through. Absolutely. In a <laughs> There's a seven Terrans in this tournament, not that many Zergs, and they are just rely on people like Dark here to get the job done. 10 SCVs on top of the 14 that have already gone down in this third CC. This is it. 
If he this can't goes lose down, that. he can't lose that. The SCVs are coming down to repair, but they're being met in the face by mutilous glaive worms and lings on the ground as well. The Marines have just enough to push them back for now, and Tasia is going to hold, but he's in a very terrible position right now. You are very correct in that. He's in a bad position, but he holds on. A big Bailey Morph is about to come through to this third base again. Tasia's going to regather his forces and attempt another big attack. Tasia has not been mining from this third base for a long time. He's been hurting an economy. He's hurting being able to build units. Can Doc find this weakness, this area, before Tasia gets back online? He's going to need to get rid of all these Banelings without losing too much at all. These Widow Mines need the connections of their life. And they're not that great. The Banelings actually getting quite a lot there. Putting the bio left and Tasia is dismal in supply. He's 80 supply down now on Dark. And the Mutalisk in the sky. No turrets. Nothing on the ground here. More oh. SCVs are going to go down and evacuated. Yeah, this is bad news for Tasia as he's dropping faster and faster in supply. Losing another 12 SCVs. He's going to lose this command center. 17 SCVs have been killed. GG moves through. GG eliminates Tasia and claims his first round of eight. Oh boy. And what a tournament to do that. We mentioned it before. This is the big one here for Intellect Stream Master Season 9. And Dark knocking back them haters, getting that hype train back on the rails. Our Intel Extreme Masters champion from Shenzhen, the first stop of Season 9, has been eliminated in the round of 16 by our online qualifier from the Korean region, SK Telecom's One Dark. An excellent performance. Oh man, that's so well deserved. As unfortunately, Tasia is excused from the tournament in the round of 16s. A lot of people wouldn't have expected that. I didn't expect that. I thought the Tasia, the veteran here, was a shoe in against Dark, who has been showing nervousness in these individual leagues. And now a lot of people have to consider Dark about how dangerous he could be through the rest of the tournament. Absolutely right. And we are going to be switching over to an interview with our winner, Tasia. He's just come out, oh sorry, our winner Dark, who's just come out on stage there. Sorry, he was on camera there. A lot of love for him, for him still in the crowd, so no love lost for Tasia. But uh, Dark is our victory, and let's get some words from him with little Susie. All right, guys, here is Dark. Let's hear it for him. Look at that, all these fans for you. Now, you know, you just beat an 11-time Premier Tournament winner. And pretty convincingly too. What are your thoughts right now? 지금 이 선수는 벌한 번이나 Premier Tournament 한 사람인데 그 사람을 이겼다라는 생각 지금 머릿속에 무슨 생각을 하고 있는지. 어 되게 사실 경기를 하면서 제가 해외 대회가 처음이라서 긴장을 되게 많이 했는데 생각처럼 잘 풀려가지고 정말 기쁜 거 기뻐요 지금. He said, you know, this is his first time out in an international tournament, so he was thinking a lot. He was really nervous, but everything went exactly the way that he expected it to, and so he's super happy about it. Okay, now, <laughs> this is your um, first time making the round of eight. 지금 팔강이 첫첫 번째잖아 이제 팔강까지 간게 그거에 대해서 그거 가지고 만족한지 아니면 목표가 지금 뭔지. 어자 어, 사전 인터뷰에서도 말씀드렸다시피 제첫 해외 대회인 만큼 어, 처음인 만큼 우승하고 싶어요. Okay. Um, so I had asked him this is your first time to the round of 8. Are you happy with how far you've come along or you know what's your plan and he was like well it's my first international tournament I want to win it all. Um, that makes complete sense to me. Next um, well next you're going to be meeting Maru or Patience. Right? Uh, and, and you've shown really strong strength towards Terran. Um, is there anyone you're looking forward to playing? Alright, he says um, they both are going to be extremely hard opponents. Uh, right now, Patience and he, they just don't get along very well when they're playing. And Maru, I mean, he's one of the best Terrans out there. So um, whoever it is that he faces, he's going to have a difficult time. Maybe a little harder of a time with Maru. So you know what? Good luck to you. Keep practicing. And we're going to go back to you guys at the analyst desk.
Thank you so much, Susie. Congratulations to Dark as he moves on. Once again, displaying his very strong Zerg versus Terran skills. We were talking about in Snoot, uh, you were even alluding to the Corruptor play, which we want to start off at the beginning of this analysis segment because in game number one, he went with that build and uh, it got in control pretty excited as well. But what, yes. what, did, you have, what did you think about that, uh, that game number one there? Yeah, I think that was just classic Dark. He opened up uh, in kind of a greedy way, but he just uh, also scouted very well and capitalized on Tejas opening, going triple command, and then Dark just had this massive, massive amount of drones coming out, set him perfectly up for the mid game, and then he went into his trademark Raptor style, and uh, it just seemed to catch uh, Teja off guard. I feel like Teja was being really aggressive, and Dark just oh. shut it down all the time, mm -hmm. even at the very edge of creep. Uh, every single time you would see Dark having his queens in front, replacing all the creep that was being lost. Just really amazing engagements and macro, especially by Dark. Did anything speak to you specifically about game number one, Jeff? Because you were, again, you were pretty digging that Corruptor style. Oh. I, I just, I think it's, it has such a cool function in that matchup. Like they're so hardy that a lot of times, one of the problems is Mutos will get those three or four medevacs, mm -hmm. but then they'll spend 2.5 seconds over the ball of Marines and they just wipe them out of the sky. It's 100 gas a pop, so it gets really expensive, starts cutting in your baneling usage as well. But Dark, especially in that game number one, went up to as many as five bases, but remained on as few as, I believe, five gases off those five bases because he was just primarily trading with the Terran, who was over-costing, over essentially. He was killing the medevacs with the Corruptors. And he never, he never had 25 Corruptors, either. It was always, like, nine-ish. Mm -hmm. uh, and he just kept engaging, as Snoot was talking about, so appropriately with the Ling and Baneling. There was a couple times where a Widowmine shot would blow up 20 Banelings, and that, that would be it for any other Zerg, because so much of their economy was tied up in that. But he could afford to do that because that was all of his gas being spent at the time. So sure. he allows himself leeway and has great engagements. It's a really dangerous situation because he's not going to make that many mistakes. But the few that he does are almost forgivable. And his macro was on point through as well, yeah. making sure to keep up. Uh, yeah, Kev, absolutely. I, I mean, you were saying that Tasia might make the comeback. You predicted Tasia, which means you're a little bit behind on the board. But uh, we saw Tasia maybe making a push. Was it because Catalina is that yeah. turn favored and is like realistically even drawing first blood didn't matter that much? Uh, it goes two ways. It's obviously a very good map for Terran, and if you look at the best of five against Dog, you know you're going to have to win Catalina, otherwise, you know, this is probably not going to win <laughs> it at all. I think what really helped him a lot is that he had a very sweet position after the first Hellbat push, which I think Dark actually handled pretty damn well, but mm -hmm. Teja followed up. He kept producing Hellions, and then he had these Hellions on the edge of Creep on the third base of Dark, and that's so frustrating for Zerg, because you want to build drones, but if you only build drones, they will just poke in, get a couple, and go away again, poke in, get a couple, and that was just really frustrating for Dark, and I think Teja really like bought so much time for himself. He also saw the 18 or so roaches immediately that kind of came out of nowhere. It's like, well, we have 18 roaches, you know, let's see what he does with it. Immediately just stepped off creep, went back, brought the Banshee back home as well. So yeah, it is a good Terran map, but Teja also played it very well. I feel like we should have seen this coming too, because Teja's always kind of prophesized as the Terran of the summer, you know? <laughs> but when do we know that summer comes to a finish? When it gets dark. It gets dark. Whoa! <laughs> Go ahead and let your brain explode Whoa. with that. Okay? Well, that uh... I don't know how to transition off that one, but I'm going to have to. We're going to go to game number yeah. four, the game that I want to talk about because we have a, a bit of a replay that we can analyze here with some of the battle as well. There's a key moment that I remember Rotterdam was pointing out specifically, so walk us through, Kev, that you felt like was the big turning point. I kind of like this setup that Teja is currently going for himself. You look at the supply, he's down only 15 or so. There's no creep or almost no creep in the right bottom side of the map. 3-3 three, three is halfway done. I feel from this point on, all he has to do is just contain. Instead, he picks a big fight, and now it's like, okay, that's a little dicey, but maybe it will be fine. Then this new wave of Bailings rolls in, and look at the supply, it's still kind of close. And these two mines, they're Trader Mines, they were supposed to kill Bailings, and they didn't. What did they kill? Oh, they oh, shot past. <laughs> yeah. Basically, Basically all the Marines. Marines. Yeah. That's the double-edged sword that is with the Mines. Uh, but one thing I feel like happened throughout the entire series was that Tejas Medivacs always felt like they were lagging behind a bit. Yeah. But that's kind of, you know, that's the choice you have to make as Terran. Do I micro my Marines? Do I control my medevacs? And in this series, I feel like Dark was always one step ahead. He kept his Corruptors alive, but Teja couldn't keep his medevacs alive. Yeah, he kept and, Teja uh, in the dark. And, and here as well, uh, but Teja could possibly have done something like loading up the um, Marines into the medevacs, but uh, just wasn't fast enough. Uh, well, uh, I mean, it, it, even I, then, I felt like Dark was doing a really good job also being, being proactive. Like, you saw that Tasia was being really aggressive, but there was moments where, like, well, when does Dark get aggressive? I felt like he was picking his timings pretty well. 
Yeah, I, I know. Just still looking at that setup, it feels like such a playable position for Teja. And I don't think he wants to fight at all. He just wanted to save that position and make sure that that side of the map would also not be covered in creep. Because if it is, and even if he has 3-3, three, three, you still don't really fight on creep. So I kind of felt it was more, he was just poking. You know, he's like, throw down a scan, pick off a two more. Maybe he rolls in a few bane links and we trade. Teja did not want a full-on fight. And I think he was kind of surprised that Dark just took it there as well, off yeah. creep. I think he didn't expect it. I didn't expect it. I didn't see that big fight coming. And when it happened, well, it could have still gone either way, but those two mines did not help. We were also worried at the beginning of the game, too, because that little roach push in the beginning that was doing a lot of SCV damage, but uh, I think Teja was fighting back pretty well overall, despite all that. Yeah. Um, and I mean, we were saying, like, from there, maybe Teja would have made, made come back from that position. Um, and and well, overall... He, he did a triple CC opening and lost yeah. 10 SCVs, and according to Maynard, that is essentially nothing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it is true, though. Like, I think so, uh, you as a Zerk player, you can probably say what you hope for, but I feel you hope for more than 10 SCVs against a triple CC opening. Yeah, definitely. I, I, every time you invest into as much as 9 roaches, you definitely want to get something like 15 plus SCVs. Yeah. I like, too, Snoot highlighted going into this that Dark is one of the two things you really want to do in ZVT, but particularly you talked about his engagements, and that was that was highlighted in all four of these games really well. Going down to the last game that Rodin was talking about, um, leading up into that big fight, there was like a small cadre of, of Lings and Banelings that got off kind of the initial Widow Mines, and they were at the edge of creep, which is again supposed to be the danger zone, where it's like, no, 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 you're not supposed to fight here, which is what Teja was thinking as well. But Dark then came in with a full army, and it wasn't even like a full... In, in, he didn't like surround him completely, yep. which would have been great, but he knew that he had what it took to, once the wood mines were gone, push on that, get the medevacs, and then once the medevacs were gone, go for the full engagement. And yes, there were some trader widow mines there, but I feel like what was kind of cool is after that happened, you saw just a trickle of blue coming off yeah, all yeah. four of those hatcheries, yeah. a fifth one being made. I'm pretty sure Dark knew at that moment in time, once I get those medevacs out of here, I'm going to be able to push on to, uh, to the win. Yeah, it seems like Dark has a really good understanding of exactly how many links you need to trigger those mines yeah. to begin with. And uh, I think it's going to be really cool to follow Dark in this tournament, uh, in sure. his ne next matches, and follow these engagements. Because he's, he's just taken wonderful fights all day today, so far. It's going to be really fun to watch him lose to either Maru or Patience. <laughs> Maru or Patience? I mean, that's the thing. Like, patience, oh, patience is the introduction against Maru. And then if Maru is able to go up against Dark, we get to see a ZVT once yeah. again, in which case we'll be able to see if he can go to the next level. Because, you know, Teja is great and all, but Maru is one of the top two Terrans right now in the world, along with Innovation. So you're just really scared about, can he take his ZVT even further going to the round of four? So it's a really interesting question that we'll have developed. But we're not done yet, guys. We still have two more series coming next on, on stream. We have Zest from Team K2 Rollster versus Hydra from Team Root Gaming. He's moved over to the West, but can he keep up? We'll find out. And of course, if you want to keep up, make sure to go to thescoreesports.com and keep up with everything here in full coverage of the Intel Extreme Masters Season 9 Championships. Don't go anywhere. When we come back, more StarCraft II action here from Katowice, Poland.